So I've done a few videos on the Axiom Velocore iron shafts, and I've largely compared them to other steel shafts to show that the stability of the shaft keeps up with the steel shaft, but it's lighter and easier to use. However, how do they compare to a stock graphite shaft? I've got the MMT 80 stiff. So we've got the Mitsubishi Chemical MMT 80 stiff. That's a stock shaft from a PXG club that I've repurposed into a Shrixton tip so I can hit it with the demo head. We're gonna see how it holds up against the Axiom 75 stiff, which is five grams lighter in theory. And then the 105 stiff, which is heavier. So the shafts I've got are 75 stiff Axiom, 80 stiff MMT, 105 stiff Axiom. So in theory, the 80 gram stiff MMT shaft should sit in the middle of the two Axiom shafts in terms of performance and flight and feel, but the Velocore tip technology is a different source. When I'm hitting the 105 stiff, I very much compare it to like a 120 stiff, 120X in a steel shaft, and it keeps up. It's just as stable, but it's easier to use at the same time. And the configuration I've got today is a ZX7 on minus two, so it's two degrees flat. In my stock irons, I have two degrees flat because the flat setting moves the ball to the right-hand side because I tend to just miss left. And what I've seen so far is that the Axiom shaft also encourages the ball to go to the right-hand side. So I've got the head leaning that way, leaning the ball flight to the right, and then the shaft, because of the Velocore tip technology, doesn't have as much movement through the ball. So when a shaft bends and releases into the ball, it shuts the face and adds loft. So when we've got a shaft that's more active at the tip, we get higher and lefter, generally speaking. Therefore, with a stiffer tip, we get the ball going lower and to the right-hand side in general. So while I've got the head and the shaft encouraging that right side bias, I am just leaning to the right-hand side of the pin. I haven't hit any left yet, but I'm not giving it everything I've got because I don't want to give it too much because the MMTs might not keep up with it. So I'm putting casual swings through the ball and I'm not getting as much activation of the end of that shaft. And when I flick into the MMT 80 shaft, I'm feeling a lot more movement. I'm feeling a lot more bend and release through the ball. So I'm getting a little bit left there of anything. So I feel like I put the same swing through the ball. It's easier to get through the ball because I'm getting a lot more help from the shaft, but not every golfer needs that. But there's been a few comments on the old channel asking for this comparison. And I do find it easier to turn this club over. I'm getting a lot more release from the tip of that shaft, so I'm getting more draw, hence the left bunker. Now across the board, we've normally got all your steel shafts that are in a set of irons. So when you go for a custom fitting, you'll have all your mid-weight steel shafts. There'll be something heavier, there'll be something lighter in the steel shaft spectrum. And then we go into the graphite shafts and we just soften everything off compared to the steel shaft. So it gets more active at the tip, it gets lighter in weight. So you can create more speed through the ball in theory. So we'll generally get different flights from that spectrum of shafts. And the Axiom are an upgrade shaft, they're an aftermarket shaft, so you won't really see them in a fitting kit unless it's a facility that supplies them. And it wouldn't surprise me if there starts becoming a few more tour players using something like the Axiom, just because of how consistent they are. And the MMT just turns over. I feel like I have to fight that left shot with the shaft, but if you lose the ball low and right, the shaft is gonna help you. It's gonna help you get a bit more release into the ball. It's gonna help you encourage that left side dominance. If you lose the ball out to the right, you can look at the low angles of the club and how the ball goes from there, but we also look at the shafts to encourage that flight. You also have to consider at the end of a round of golf, are you gonna be able to move that heavy steel shaft? Are you still gonna be swinging at your optimum speed? Because let's face it, we all fatigue a little bit at some point. Now, if I go into the 75 stiff in the Axiom, lighter than the 105, lighter than the 80 gram MMT shaft, but what does that added Velocore technology do to that 75 gram shaft compared to the MMT stock shaft that maybe isn't as stable at the tip? In the fittings that I've had with the 75 stiff Axiom shafts, it's been golfers that have used like a Dynamic Gold 105 stiff steel shaft. 
or the 105 Modus, for example, where they've seen similar performance but better results from this shaft compared to their slightly heavier steel alternative. I would prefer you to try them before just getting them built into your clubs. If you're at this end of the spectrum, if, you, if you're going for the lighter graphite shafts, I wouldn't jump up to an Axiom. I'd go more downwards. I'd be like the heavy stiff shafts. I'd go down the category in weight and then go into the Axiom. I wouldn't go from like a 60 gram graphite shaft up to the 75 in the Axiom because it's going to be harder work. But that feels nice and solid. Just turn into that left hand side. Penny, shut up. Pen. Might have to delete that bit. But if I go into the data here, what are we getting? So I've actually got the Axiom 105s at 117 peak height. Then I scroll down to the 75 and I've also got 117 peak height with both Axiom shafts. When I look at the MMT, I've actually got a lower peak height, only by two yards. But I think that's because the face has got a bit more activity through the ball. It's just de-lofting a little bit to just lower that flight. Some golfers that are hitting the ball a bit low and a little bit slower potentially would get more height from that graphite shaft. But it does depend what you're comparing it to, what you're coming from. So the shafts that you used before or the shafts that you're also testing, it depends on the contrast between them up to the Axiom shafts or up to the MMT graphite shafts as to how your difference would happen. So my swing speed's quite consistent with all three shafts, slowest being the 105, there's a bit more weight to move through the ball. MMT 80 sitting in the middle of the two, so that would that would link quite closely to the weight of the shaft because that's slightly heavier, it's slightly slower, because that's heavier, it's slightly slower. So the weights are progressive with the speed that I create. In terms of my club path, I've got very similar club path between the three models. I'm hitting down on the Axiom 105 a bit more and I've leveled out when I go into that 75, 80 gram area. So that could be where the shaft bends and releases into the ball. As the shaft doesn't release with the 105, we're coming downwards towards the ball. As it releases with the 75 and the 80 a bit more, we get a bit more activity. It levels the club out just that little bit sooner. So a slight difference in the data there and angle of attack coming from the shaft type. Now, as I would expect, I've got the left side of the shots coming from the 80 stiff in the MMT and then when I get the Velocore tip technology we move over this way so even though this is lighter the tip stiffer so it just holds that ball just slightly right of the MMT 80 and then we go to the furthest right hand side with the 105 stiff and I have my tightest dispersion with the 105 because I've got a certain pace through the ball that shaft just keeps up with me and delivers a bit more consistently. If you use a shaft that bends and releases too much or you've got too much speed for that shaft it will bend and release at different rates and give you a bit more spread in data. If you use a shaft that maintains with your speed or matches your speed better, you tend to get a tighter dispersion. Testing is key for each individual golfer. Ball speed, slightly slower on the 105, again, because it was a little bit slower in clubhead speeds and the strike. So ball speeds are progressive. Well, they're not progressive actually. So the, the MMT80, because we've got a bit more tip, tip speed, tip release, we're just getting that little tiny jump because this was actually slightly slower than the Axiom 105. So this was actually slightly slower than the Axiom 75, but we get more out of the golf ball because of that extra tip movement. Spin rates are progressive this way. Even though this MMT should be in the middle in terms of weight on paper, we get a progressive movement here because that tip technology moves the 75 above the 80. I've got a bit more distance out of the MMT, but I've also got more spread, but we're getting three yards, three yards, and two yards of variance. So they're all keeping up pretty well. Again, that lower launch angle and lower spin on the MMT 80, because I'm getting that head to turn over a bit more, I'm closing the face down. As we add loft, we get more spin. If we take loft off, we get less spin. So as I get more face closure from the MMT 80 stiff, I get lower launch and lower spin from that element of the swing and how the shaft reacts to it. But I hope that helps when we go into an upgrade Axiom Velocore shaft, we get a bit more stability, we get a bit more rigidity in the shaft. So that's where we can go down in weight compared to what you use already and maintain the stability of that heavier shaft. When we go to a stock graphite shaft, we lose that extra stability, but we gain a bit more tip activity. So we get a bit more movement from it to help you get the ball airborne and left for a right-handed golfer. And I've probably got more spin from the 105 stiff in the Axiom because I don't need two degrees flat and that Axiom. I need two degrees flat or that Axiom. So where I'm getting the flatter club and the stiffer tip shaft, I'm leaving the face open, I'm maintaining more loft, I'm not shutting it down as much. So I get a bit more height and a bit more spin from it. But if I were to step up a gear and put a bit more speed into it, I can get a bit more release and reaction from the shaft to bring that flight back down. Jump in the comments what you think about this sort of area. Do you think it's worth upgrading to the Axiom? Do you think it, the stock shafts are just as good? Do you realize that spend, do you, do you think that spend would relate to better results?